Hi, I'm Susan Baggins. I am an encourager, a scribe, and the silly mother of three hobbits, a dog, and a bird, which hopefully you will hear none of while I try to record this. Had a crazy weekend, and I came home after lunch with a friend today and took a nap. And when I woke up, I just had this thought on my mind that I needed to do a video about waiting. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Waiting is an active thing. It's not passive. And I don't like waiting. Not many of us do. But I have been accused in the past that waiting to make certain decisions and choices that other people feel were right for me was being passive. No, it's not. I lost a friend over that because I didn't do what she thought I should do. Years later, as I've waited on God, as I've sought Him, as I've grown, as I've matured, as I've wrestled with issues within myself that needed to be dealt with, God's now given me an opportunity and the open door to make that choice. He always gives us a choice. But it's a matter of obedience, not patience. Does that make sense? We're not always going to get what we want as quickly as we want it. But sometimes the process of getting there is going to be slow because there's lessons we need to learn along the way. When the Israelites left Egypt and they were wandering in the desert, I mean, they could have gone straight to the promised land, the land of milk and honey. God could have given, I mean, he's the perfect GPS. He could have directed them straight there. But they had spent all these years in captivity with all these gods and the, the culture around them that really drew them away from the one true God. And they needed to learn who God was. And God wanted to spend that time with them to show them his provision, his faithfulness. He was visibly with them. And yet they consistently complained and they sinned. In the spite of his daily provision, and they didn't get there. Not all of them. There was a point where God forbade some of them to go, and they ended up waiting even longer, longer, wandering in the desert until those people had died. Because their sin, nope, God wasn't going to let them do that. The same with Moses. After everything he had done, and as close as he had been with God, he grew impatient, and he couldn't obey a simple request that God had given him. And because of that, God said, you will not see the promised land. And he died before entering the promised land. And it was Joshua who got to walk and take the battles and, and lead the nation into the land of milk and honey. Waiting is an active thing. And in the waiting, God teaches us many lessons. Now, I am somebody who likes to go fast in some ways. I play my guitar fast. That's why there's a guard on it, and it's heavily scratched, because after I practice the hard stuff that takes me more time and it's slower, then I'll pull out the songs that are rocking, and I have some fun, and I strum. I lose picks quite often. They fly out of my hands. And so it's scratched. Cruise control, for a reason, like I said. And when I sew, I sew fast too. So I do better with, you know, straight stitches, just getting the job done quickly. Um, 
I don't even necessarily like using the machine, so if I have to just come a pair of pants, I usually do it by hand. But a couple years ago, I got a gift at Christmas, and I'm always amazed at people who can do this stuff. But it's this. Can you see this? This. Maybe it's upside down for you. I don't know. This is called... There, that looks better. This is called a mug rug. And it came in a Christmas present, and it was handcrafted by an author who likes to quilt. And I can put my glass of cold salt soda or whatever, or my hot mug of tea in the morning, and it protects my antique wooden table that I use as my desk from harm. My mug rug. I love my mug rug. It's so cool, but it's intricately designed. And the person who made this had to wait for the finished product to be done. Piece by piece by piece, she built something beautiful. Now, I have a friend that I hadn't seen in a couple of years. She used to go to our church, but we've been in communication online, and she's kept, oh, we should get together. We're, we don't live that far apart. We should get together. We should get together. We should have lunch. Well, we were going to try last week. It didn't work out because she wasn't feeling well, and we met today. And she gave me this beautiful, beautiful quilt. Can you see that? Just gorgeous. And she does this as a way of stress relief. Now, this would not be my stress relief. Taking a good walk is a better stress relief for me. Playing my guitar fast is a better stress relief for me. For her, it's slowing down. And it's doing something intricate, like cutting out all these pieces, selecting the fabrics, piecing them together to make this beautiful quilt that I love. And she could have a vision in her mind of what that's going to be because she is the creator. But God has a vision in his mind of where we're going to be and who we're going to be and the beauty that our life is going to be. But he wants to put all those pieces together as we grow. And some of those pieces are things that we need to grow through, lessons we need to learn, dependence on him in difficult circumstances so that we can trust that he is faithful. God is creating something beautiful in our lives. And the waiting is active. It's a verb. We're in process. It's not a stagnant ground for mosquitoes to grow. We live. I live in Wisconsin, and we. I we. I live in the Kettle Moraine, where the um, glaciers had gone through, and the glaciers left these huge, you know, hills, and then there's these deep, deep what they call kettles, and in these kettles is where water can accumulate. It's not a spring, but water will pool in these kettles. And because they're, they're so deep down, there's no, the air doesn't reach them. And, you know, moss will grow on them, and they're steep down. If you drive through the Kettle Moraine region, you go through these winding roads, and there's just these huge drop-offs where at the bottom there's water. And in the spring, we get a lot of moisture that's where the mosquitoes breed because they need still water. Did you know that? It's stagnant and out of that stagnant passive water comes something horrible! Mosquitoes! But when we are actively seeking God and He's stirring us inside and He's growing us and he is showing us his faithfulness, something beautiful will emerge. I write stories. If I write a love story, boy meets girl, boy falls in love with girl, girl falls in love with boy, and they get married, it doesn't make for a very interesting story. We want them to grow, we want them to have challenges, we want them to become something better than where they were at the beginning of the story. And in a way, I'm the creator of that story, and I get to take them on that journey because I know 
how beautiful their ending is going to be. They don't when they're in the middle of their story. I'm acting like they're real people because in my head they are. I have a friend who says, I have a very strange relationship with my characters in my books. And I do, and I love it. I won't apologize for it. They are wonderful people. Flawed, human, but they seek God. And that's the way we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to be stagnant. I have another talk that I've done for these on accountability. And in one of my, in the several of my books, accountability is a key topic and a theme. And the point of accountability isn't to let somebody st sit still. It's to help push them forward. And in my first book, Pesto and Potholes, I was meeting with a book club who had read the book. And I said, you guys realize that Tony wouldn't have gotten the girl if it hadn't been for the guys in his accountability group. They pushed him forward. He had to wait to get the ultimate prize. But if he hadn't been pushed, if he hadn't grown, he would never have won the girl. He would never have gotten his beautiful happily ever after ending. The same is true for us. God is orchestrating our story and he's putting the pieces of the quilt together. He's, he's knitting it. He's however you want to describe that process of creativity. He is our creator. He is our designer. He knows the end. And if we seek to obey him and to grow in the process and trust that he is not slow in keeping his promises, and that's not necessarily a promise for wealth, health, and happiness. But I can say that there is peace that we get when we trust and wait on God. I lost a friend because I wouldn't make a decision. I had another friend who I called her and said, you know, this is what's going on in my life. Well, I didn't call her. I actually emailed her said, this is what's going on in my life right now. Just thought I'd let you know. If you think to pray for me as I go through this journey, I'd appreciate it. She called me on the phone, which we hadn't talked in a long time. And she said, I am so, so sorry because years ago I told you to do this and I was wrong. You told me that you needed to wait until God gave you permission to make this move. And I told you not to do that, to go ahead and you know, move and you waited and you were right. The, the woman I met with today has watched my journey and she's like, it's not the fact that you're making the choice that you're making. It's the fact that the journey that you've been on and that I've watched you take has been one of obedience. I haven't been perfect at all, but I've sought to obey God every step of the way and even imperfectly that has been a testimony to other people. And I'm not saying that to brag. This has been a hard journey. But I do know that because I waited, when I made that choice, when I made that decision to do this action, which is none of your business, so I'm not going to share with you the details. You can apply it to whatever decision you need to make, whether it's what kind of health care to get or what kind of treatment to choose or whether to take this job or that job. Waiting on God for him to lead and guide is important, whatever our circumstance. It can be hard. It can be painful. The Israelites found it was not easy. It is far from passive. It is an active thing. So in the years that I have been waiting, I have sought therapy, I have prayed, I have journaled, I have served in my church, I have been raising my children, I have been doing different things to grow. God loves us so much right where we are right now. The saying is, you know, he, he does. He loves us right where we are. Wherever you are right now in your life, he loves you right here and now. There's no doubt about that. As messed up as awesome, whatever your life is at, his love for you is all-encompassing. But he also loves you too much to let you stay there. 
I'm not in the best place in my life right now. I'm in a decent place. I have peace. I have joy. Um, there are days I still cry because life is still hard at times. And there are challenges ahead. But it's going to get better. And I know that God is writing my happily ever after. I don't know what that's going to look like. But I can trust him right now today because this is what he's given me he's given me today today to honor and obey him in whatever it is that I'm called to do so I'm going to give him my excellence and I'm going to try to give him my best I should be like Yoda you know do no try just do it not always that easy is it sometimes we have to wait for healing physical healing, emotional healing, see a physical therapist, and I'm not healed yet because I play tambourine aggressively. I've got tambourine elbow instead of tennis elbow. Most people with tennis elbow don't have tennis elbow. Try not to bruise my leg and my hand, so I hurt my elbow instead because, you know, I just never do anything quite normal. Um, I have a atypical hearing loss in, in one ear. I'm like, atypical, that definitely defines my life. What is normal? Definitely not me. So you get the raw, real me. No makeup, no lipstick, imperfect, human, fallible me. But I'm also loved by the creator of the universe. And he has had his hand on my life and he has guided me and he has led me on this journey a journey I never would have chosen myself if I were writing my story this is not the story I would have written but isn't that the truth for most of us as we go through life things happen and we end up on a journey we didn't ask for but if we seek to honor God and obey him in the process he will honor that and he will continue to lead and he will continue to guide as we wait on him. He is not slow in keeping his promises. I've often joked, um, God's timing is perfect, but it sucks. It's hard to wait. It's not an easy passive thing to do. So don't let anybody tell you you're being passive if you're waiting on God. And you don't let anybody tell you that you need to do this, this, or this. You listen to God to tell you what to do. And some people say, well, God doesn't speak to us. Yes, actually he can if we listen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and lead us into all righteousness or from unrighteousness I imperfect I'm not very great at memorizing but he will lead us if we draw near to him he will draw near to us the Holy Spirit was given to us to lead us to guide us to convict us of sin and unrighteousness to grow us up in our faith emotionally and spiritually so waiting is active actively seeking God and obeying him every step of the way and I encourage you to do that get somebody as an accountability partner so that you can be encouraged as you wait that somebody can be praying for you and, and reminding you of why you're waiting in the last couple of years I've had times of desperation and and that feeling of frustration and I know in my head that God is faithful but my heart just can't seem to get the message and I've called friends and I'm like, can you please just remind me once again that God is faithful? I need to hear it from somebody else. And I say, Susan, God is faithful. He has always been faithful to you. He will not let you down. Hold on. Hang in there. Persevere. And I get a little bit more strength then for the journey to take that next step forward 
to not be passive, but to actively pursue God as I wait for him to act on my behalf. That doesn't mean that he is promising me wealth or perfect health or fame and fortune. I don't really want wealth. I want enough to live on for my needs to be met. We lived in a mobile home for a long time. And years and years and years ago, a friend of mine, um, she's moved to another country now. I just said to her, I said, I have a, this weird dream. I said, I really think that God wants me to have a yellow house. Can you pray for me that God would give me a yellow house? And years later, we were forced into a move. Um, we were living in rented property that was on land that the state bought, um, eminent domain, because they were going to be building a safer highway. This was a really good thing for us. We lived in a moldy 700 square foot mobile home with three kids. It was insane. It was crazy making. Anytime I cleaned the house, I was sick for an entire day later. There was mold everywhere in the walls, like ceilings and stuff, and it made me sick. It got to the point that when I wanted to vacuum, I actually had to put on like a gas mask kind of a thing, filter. I looked like an alien just to vacuum my floors. And then I had to wait about an hour, you know, let things settle down, and then I could take the mask off. It was hot, it was sweaty, it was awful. The time came when we needed to move and I started to look for a place for us to live. And I knew I needed two bathrooms and all this stuff. So I had my little requirement, but, but my biggest one was that when I would walk into the house, I would feel like I had come home. And the place that I live in right now, I, I, I found it and I called the landlord and came to look at it and I walked into the kitchen and I just felt like, this is it. This had everything I asked for and it was in the price that I wanted. And after I signed the papers and it had to be approved by the state and all that stuff, I was driving back to the house to, I don't know, just check it out. What else am I going to need before we move? And it hit me. My house is yellow. God gave me a yellow house. I wasn't even seeking a yellow house. I was just looking for a place to live. But I had waited on him for the right time. And then he provided something that I wanted and desired and didn't even remember. We have a God that's so cool like that. God is not slow in keeping his promises. He is faithful. His timing is perfect, and even when it hurts and it's hard. So I just want to encourage you to stay the course. Find people who can support you on your journey. Find a good church that you can worship at and grow in. Seek a therapist if you need to. Don't stay stuck. Don't be passive. Waiting is an active moving forward until God opens the door to the future that he has for you. I pray that you will find his joy and his peace when you get there. And even on the journey, even through the tears, even through the struggle, he will be there with you. Blessings.